Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're doing fantastic. It is a third day on our Father's calendar, and these are some things I've kind of been thinking about, and what you're looking at here is you're looking at the lineage of Adam to our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. And so it's very important that we understand timelines and lineages and things of that nature because when we want to prove creation and a creator, we have to have a timeline and we have to have something that makes sense. And so when you look at this and you read the Bible and you go very slowly, you start to discover all of these people that are in here and they become kind of celebrities. I guess everybody in here decides these guys are brown or black. Um, I don't necessarily know if that is true or not, but this is the best graphic that I could find. And so this is, this is cool. So from Adam, which is Adam, then he had his, his one of his sons, Seth, and Seth had Enos and uh, Canaan, Mahalal, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noach. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. They made like little graphics for all these guys. It's super cool. Um, Shem, Arp, Aksed, uh, Salah, Eber. And it goes on through these generations, right? And it goes all the way around. And there's one I want to focus on over here because we are, there is... A fella, his name is Boaz, right? See this guy right here? And he's the father right before we get into King David. King, or not King, he, Boaz was um, just a, a Yishmaelite, right? I, I don't, I can't remember what tribe he's from. Um, it definitely says. Um, but what you know and what we know about Boaz is there was a Gentile woman. And the Gentile woman, her name was Ruth. And Ruth had a mother, and Ruth's mother was um, a Hebrew, and Ruth was a Moabite. And so a Moabite is a Gentile, right? And most people today consider themselves Gentiles, right? Because we've been told in churches and told in different things that there's a special group of people, which are the Jews, God's people, and then there's the Gentiles, and that's us. And the only way we are ever going to make it is by our Messiah who grafted us in and, and allowed this to happen. And, and while that may be true to that extent, you can be a Gentile, and you're only a Gentile because you're not keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. If you want to go in covenant with Him, if you want a ketubah, a marriage between yourself and our Creator, it begins with you keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of, of our Creator. Um, and that creates the marriage, right? And so that is that you're no longer a Gentile. If you don't drink the blood, if you, um, keep the laws that, you know, it's just, there, there's so many laws that are so good and they are holy things. And if you start keeping those, that takes you out of the land of Gentile. You are no longer Gentile because you're in covenant. Gentile simply means you're out of covenant with our creator. So it is very important that we see the lineage and we see the genealogy and we see all the timeline that it takes here because we know that our creator said, I created this certain time, a certain date, a certain this. We know he, that the beginning began at a certain time and then he gave us the lineage, which nobody's ever been able to disprove. They can't disprove this whatsoever. So you and I are brothers and sisters based upon this lineage. Wherever you're at, whoever you are, if you're black, brown, yellow, green, whatever color you are, if you are from our creator, we are all brothers and sisters, right? It doesn't matter the 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 skin color, you know, that's only the coolness, right? That's only the look. That's our creator making uniqueness in all of us, right? And so, but we are all brothers and sisters, right? All the way from back into this time. And so we must understand um, about lineages and about things of this nature because it all stems in um, to a couple things. And one of these is, you know, how many generations have there been from Adam to Yahushua, Right. And there were 76 generations. So when you are looking at 76 generations and from now, now there are about 280, I believe, is, is what the answer is on this. Um, since Adam to now, sorry, I thought I had this all pulled up for you guys. But until today, so it is... I don't see this here. Generations from Adam, Bible timeline. 
So I don't see this, and I'm not going to waste your time on this, but I will post this in there. It's about 278 generations. Um, and maybe these guys go into I do. I saw this a little bit earlier, and he, he started, um, it looked like a really good write-up on this. So 76 generations, right? And... Anyway, he it the last I saw it was about two hundred and eighty seven, I believe. One guy had an account and one other guy had an account of three hundred and seventeen. Because this this stems back to what I want to get into right here. And um back in, in the book of Exodus. Now, if you guys can accept that you guys are the people of God, if you there's no there's no bloodline, right? There's no lineage. Ruth the Moabite married Boaz. And from Boaz, our Messiah's line was going, right? And so the Gentiles, all you have to do is keep the law, statutes, and commands. And so Exodus 26, it says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments, right? That is one place I want to um, I want to take us. And, and they talk about generations in all of this right here, right? And it's, it's all about those who keep my commandments, right? And that is the whole basis of... The Bible, that is the entire basis of the Bible, is that we should be keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our of our creator, and we shall, um, we should be keeping this, and I don't have this one right here, but let's go back to right here, and this is what I was looking at today, and so Leviticus 22, 31, um, it, it says, right, it's, you know, let's, I know a lot of people are like, well, that's the old people. They're the, they're the old, that doesn't apply to us. It's a different time. And it may be a different time, but the conditions are, there's no conditions, right? It doesn't say, let's, let's say, for instance, if we want to put a condition and, and add or take away to the Torah, we, on Luke 22, 31, we go, so you shall keep my commandments and do them for 20 generations, right? Or you shall do this for only this time or something of the sort. There's no end time to this. There's no stop to this. It's just keep my commandments. Can you guys keep my commandments, right? Um, Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 2. Now, this is a commandment, the statutes and the judgments with the, which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land which you are going over to possess it. And a lot of times that'll trip people up. It'll trip the Christians up. It says over to the land. Well, we're not, we're not Hebrew people. We're not in the land. No, we are not. We are called to be back to the land. We are the modern day um, exiled people right now. If you understand that the Torah is for you and you love our, our creator and you love the Messiah, this we are part of what will be a second exodus, right? This is He's just setting all of this up for some great miracles. And it doesn't matter that you're not in the land. Just because you're not in the land, you, I mean, just if you're in the land of the Babylonians, right, and you start offering your kids to Moloch on the on the uh, abortion table, right, that's not what we are told to do. And you are, if, if you keep these laws, statutes, and commands, you would know that you would never have your daughter go into uh, a kill unit and, and have the baby slaughtered, right? So it doesn't matter that it says it's going into the land because you are in the land. If you are being created, if you are being provided for by our creator with a house, with a, uh, somewhere to live, you're not in a cardboard box. And even if you're in a cardboard box, praise be to Yah, because you at least have that cardboard, right? There's always something and you always must give praise to our creator in all that you do because he is, he is good and he is holy and he is the only one that will be saving us in these end times. So when it says the land where you are going to possess it, that's you, that's your place right now. And the land we're going to possess is the new Jerusalem, is the new Yisrael. It is it, Mount Zion, right? We're going to reign with the king. It's going to be marvelous. It's going to be miraculous. And if you don't have the faith to understand what I'm saying, faith will begin by you reading the Bible. If you guys start in Genesis and run it to the end, you will understand and run it as a love letter from our creator. This is a love letter. This is an instructional guidebook to a very complex machine, your body, your temple, yourself. And if you do not read your instruction manual, you're missing out, right? You're completely missing out on blessings, and you're missing out on the walk with our creator. The walk with Satan is very easy, right? You flip on HBO, flip on Netflix, flip on this, turn on, start surfing porn, right? That's the walk with Hasatan. That is the walk with Hasatan. And it is a dirty walk. It is a nasty walk. And it is an unholy walk. And it is a walk that you don't need to be. You don't want to be. Time is so short. Time is so short, my friends. 
that if you do not act now and you do not get your house in order, which means you, if you don't know the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator, and for all your time you've tossed them on the cross because that's what everybody else said to do, my friends, that is not what the Bible says to do. That is not what the Bible says to do at all. In fact, Deuteronomy 6, 17, actually, let's finish this off right here. Where you're going to possess it so that you and your son and your grandson might fear, and this is back to Deuteronomy 6, 1, 2, fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes, all his commandments, which I commanded you, all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. De Deuteronomy 6, 17, you should diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he commanded you, right? It doesn't say until the end of uh, Adam. It doesn't say till the end of Moses, Moshe's life. It doesn't say to our Messiah comes and puts it on a tree and fulfills it and makes the, the laws void. You know, that is the doctrines of the devil. That is not what this is. Our creator has good ways. Not eating pork is a good thing. It will save your life. Not beating up your neighbor and stealing his stuff may save your life too because the guy might shoot you, right? There's things in the Torah that will save your life if you keep them and abide them in your life. It is not just a bunch of old raggedy, uh, clunkety chains that you must put on and you're dragging balls around and you're like, oh, I'm afflicted. You know what? When you guys put your mask on your face, you are in far more bondage than ever keeping the laws of God, which are not bondage. They are a beautiful thing. They are a blessed thing. Listen, they will completely bless your house. They will make your world completely different, right? And the Bible is, the entire Bible theme is keeping the laws, statutes, and commands all the way to our Messiah. Guys, let's keep looking here. Deuteronomy 8, 1, let's go let's skip around. All the commandments that I am commanding you today that you shall be careful to do. Guys, remember, he said he keeps reminding you that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your forefathers, right? And that same land is what we are promised in the kingdom, right? We are promised a place. We are promised a mansion if we keep the faith. But you must keep the faith. And keeping the faith is having your life apply and look like you're keeping the faith. If you guys are dirty, rotten people doing dirty, rotten stuff, which we all are, and you haven't repented and you haven't changed your way, right? Our Messiah's blood is not a, a, a get out of sin card. It is not something that you can, you can go check out porn and then go plead the blood, check out porn, go plead out the blood. It's not something you can go cheat on your wife, right? Every bit of that is adultery. If you look at another woman with lust in your eyes, and that is including pornography, that is adultery. That is breaking a commandment of our creator. And our creator gave us commands like this so that you don't look after other women, if you're a married man, be a man and keep your eyes on your woman and your woman only. Do not stray. Do not let the demons and devils and the dirty women of this world take your eyes away from your wife. It doesn't matter if she gained a little bit of weight since you guys married her. It doesn't matter anything about it. That is the one who you've dedicated your life to and you need to not commit adultery by doing things like that. And that's just a simple command of our creator. Let's go on, right? Deuteronomy 10, 13, and to keep the Lord's commandments and his statutes. Again, Deuteronomy 11, 15, 11, 1, and you shall therefore love the Lord your God and always keep his charge, his statutes, his ordinance, as his commandments. Guys, how can you love anything if you've taken that and you don't even know it? If you do not know the laws of God by heart, how can you say you love your God, Yahuwah? How can you? Honestly. So, of course, all in Deuteronomy, here we go. I mean, it's just, it's over and over and over, right? Deuteronomy 38, and you shall again obey the Lord and observe all his commandments, which I command you today. Guys, no timeline, no end to it. It's over and over and over, right? Let's get into Joshua. What does it say there? Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law, which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. Guys, this is not a joke. He's You will have success where you go. You may fall into the pit. You may get owned. You may end up with tribulation and trials and things of that nature. But when you walk with our creator, you can always count on him. Always. Always. Guys, it goes through this. First Kings 3.14, if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commands as your father, Dawid, David, walked, then I will prolong your days over and over 2 Kings 17, 37, the statutes and the ordinance and the law and the commandment, which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do forever, right? Forever. And you shall not fear other gods, right? Psalm 78, 7, that they should put their confidence in God and not forget the works of God. But what, guys? But what? 
Keep his commandments. And commandment keeping begins with Sabbath keeping. Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the way it is. Let's go to Matthew 19, 17 and 19, see if we can find something there. And he said to them, and this is our Messiah, why are you asking me about what is good? There's only one who is good, but if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Guys, if you're a Christian, if you are a person who is supposedly following the Christ, right, and keeping his example, in Matthew, in the books you guys are supposed to be keeping, it says, keep the commandments. Then he said, which one? Which ones? And Jesus said, Yahushua said, and you shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Um, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Right? What is he doing? He's repeating the Torah. He's not saying these are the new sets of commandments. He is saying what it is. And then you will go on. If you will remember, they trick him and they say, which are the, what is the greatest of the commandments? And the greatest of the commandments, they, he thought, they thought they were going to trick him. He, it's to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. And what's the second? Love our neighbor as ourself. And some people are like, well, that's the only two commandments our Messiah had. And that's not true because our Messiah says that is two of the greatest commandments and not one jot or one tittle of the Torah will be gone until heaven and earth pass away. And so here we are right here. Um, our creator has said to keep his laws, statutes, and commands for all generations. Guys, even if we were in generation 350 after Adam, that's not every generation. That's not forever. Forever is forever. Do you guys understand what this means? We are only here in a whisper of a time. In our history, right, we live 80 to 120 years, and then we are gone. We don't know what came before, but what we do know is we were presented all with a Bible. And if we go to our graves without cracking that Bible and letting people in a church with a, with, with a, a Bible on the wrong day teach us how to love God and appreciate God and what he wants to do. Guys, our creator would never, ever, ever have us in a Sunday keeping church ever. There's no God there. And you know what? I know you guys feel like you can, you got the euphoria of the band and met and music and this and that and people are loving it and it's all in the name of Jesus, right? <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up and we're going to, we're going to call this one for the day. But the reason they sit there and they do this all in the name of the Messiah is because they are completely, they're, they're completely jacked. They don't have their doctrine correct. They don't keep the, they don't keep the commandments of our creator. And there's so many people that are going to say this. Not everyone that says to me, Adonai, Adonai shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. Now the will of my father, which is in heaven is a, a big thing, right? The will of the father is the commandments of our creator. Many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name have cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works and then i will profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye workers of iniquity yesterday's lesson was about that there's not very many people then the day before that there's the, there's very few that make the kingdom the bible is riddled with that it says it all over the place not many make the kingdom the question is will you be the one making the kingdom will you do what it takes will you seek our father will you call upon the name of yahushua will you do what it takes in this life right now and you only have this life right now because we are only but a vapor and every breath that we have is because it's a gift from our creator. So when we breathe no more, then we have no other shot. Guys, I encourage you guys today to read your Bibles. I love you. I'm out.